before the bright dawn in the garden when love was resurrected, before the cold silence of the tomb by which love was swallowed, before the black horror of the cross on which love was broken, before the bitter struggle of another garden through which love affirmed its choices. Jesus, eating a final supper with his friends, blessed and broke bread and poured out a cup of wine, sharing these tokens with them as a confirmation of the life he had lived and a sign of what was to come. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Welcome everyone to this service which has been recorded here in the Vicarage in Long Ashton for Maundy Thursday. This night when, uh, as our opening poem put it, love affirmed its choices. Maundy Thursday is a mixture of endings and beginnings. The preparation of Lent is ended. It is, if you like, the beginning of the end now. There is an inevitability about what is to come over these next three days. But also tonight, the Gloria will ring out for the first time in over six weeks. We'll not hear it again until Easter Day, but it gives us a glimpse of the new beginning, the new life which will spring forth in just a few days' time. Our opening hymn reminds us of those words of Jesus which we will hear again tonight. Love one another as I have loved you. Our hymn is My Song is Love Unknown.
Our Lord Jesus Christ said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin and we shall be clean. Wash us and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed 
does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living servant God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've just heard one of the most famous passages of the Bible and some of the most oft quoted words of Jesus. Love one another as I have loved you. We've heard told again that deeply moving act central to our faith of the God of heaven stooping to the dust of the earth, getting his hands dirty, kneeling on the floor, paying the price of love in a classic example of humble service. And I have no doubt that we understand the significance of this act for us too, particularly in these times we're living through. We know that when we get outside the church, when the liturgy is over and the work of being a Christian in the world begins, we are supposed to offer that same love and service to our communities, to love our neighbours, to put the needs of others before ourselves. And there are plenty of examples of it going on at the moment, as people serve one another in different ways through this crisis. It's hugely encouraging in our isolation to see such love of neighbour being manifest. I hope it is one of the things we will not lose again once the immediacy of this crisis is over. However, there's something else about this passage which is perhaps not always so easily noticed or thought about, but which we also need to remember. In washing the disciples' feet, Jesus is not just doing a good deed, not just fulfilling a practical need, being useful. Although it is those things, it does start with human need. The real significance of his act of service is what it says about who he is. Its true meaning lies in something beyond itself to which it points. He washes feet because it shows who he is, what he came to do, and who sent him. For us too, his present day disciples who've been washed and welcomed into his new community of love, we do the work of service for others, 
but we also do the work of God and we also point to him as we do so. Loving neighbour and loving God. There are many things we could do to serve a world in need, especially at the moment. But what are the specific ones God calls us to do? Where we are, with the gifts and abilities he has given us. It's often said that where the world's needs and our God-given gifts meet and align, there is where we're called to be and serve. And it may not always be where we imagine or where we would like it to be. Many of you will know that before coming here to this benefice, uh, my family and I spent a year living in Greece, ministering in the Anglican Church in Athens. Now, I can tell you that Greece is a dusty country. It brings the biblical stories to life and one can well appreciate the need for washing feet on arrival at a dinner party. But Greece is also a country that understands something of the cost of service, understands something about sacrificial generosity and hospitality that goes beyond just inviting your friends and loved ones for dinner. Greece is a country that understands something about loving God and therefore loving neighbour, however hard it may be. Greece is currently home to over 100,000 refugees, 1% of its entire population. And it's estimated that over 1 million have passed through Greece since the Syrian crisis began. One camp designed to accommodate 3,000 people on a small island is now pushing 10,000 inhabitants. Hospitable they remain, but the Greeks are understandably at breaking point. During my time in Greece, I worked at an organisation called Hestia Hellas, Hestia being the ancient goddess of the hearth of hospitality, and the name sums up the approach. The mission was to support those people who found themselves in Greece to feel at home there. These were people, it was recognised, who were no longer passing through, but now likely to stay for some time, making homes and lives for their families there, as the borders to other countries and to Northern Europe were closed around them. My job was simply to listen to their stories and to try to help them make a sensible plan for the future. And I will admit that I didn't always enjoy going to my work there. I didn't look forward to it every time. It unsettled me. It faced me with the world's intractable problems when I didn't feel I had much to offer. It forced me to do things that weren't easy or comfortable because that was the need and I was the person on duty. It forced me to sit patiently with people I found difficult. It cost me time I could well have spent on other things. And I confess occasionally to a sense of relief on the days they would phone and say that I wasn't needed. That work cost me, and yet it was the reason I was called to Greece and one of the abiding experiences of the year we spent there. And although it may not always have been a happy, cheerful experience, although sometimes it was that, don't get me wrong, I knew and I know now it was the only response I could offer in the circumstances that came anywhere close to an adequate response to the costly love of God poured out for me and for all humankind on the cross. We can't repay God for his love and that's not what is required nor what he wants, but what he does yearn for is that his children should recognise and take hold of the opportunity he has presented to enter fullness of life and freedom and joy by opening themselves fully to his love and then finding themselves compelled to share it with a world in need. We do what we do for God and for neighbour and to show neighbour something of God 
So don't stop serving, for heaven's sake. But do remember why and who you're serving. Maybe pray before you start a task. Be alert as you go about your service for the opportunities God is opening up to you as you do. Look back afterwards and thank God for what he has shown you. And yes, on occasion be ready to speak the name of Jesus or talk of the things of God, because sometimes we are given the opportunity to express our love in words as well as actions. And do tell me, do share with others in the ministry group, with friends that you trust, what you notice as you go about your service with an intention to serve God as well as neighbour. These times are costly to us all in different ways. And as Christians following the servant king, these times demand of us the cost of our pride, our courage and our faith, our time, talents and money, our prayer and our love given freely, generously, sacrificially, not because we're duty bound and not only because it's useful or helpful, but also because we find it the only viable expression of thanksgiving for the life and love we have been gifted by God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though, Though he was, he was divine, divine, he did, did not cling to equality with God, but, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high, and, and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the, the glory of God the Father. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ the Saviour of the world. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your son Jesus Christ washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and, and humble us. us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, hear us and unite us. On this night he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us and, and renew, renew our zeal. On this night he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us, and, and fill, fill us with, with your love. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us, and, and give, give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and, and welcome, welcome all, all your, your children, children into, into paradise. paradise. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
at the Eucharist, we are with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that it was not only our ancestors, but we who were redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that as he was with them in the upper room, so our Lord is with us now. Until the kingdom of God comes, let us celebrate this feast. The Lord is here. His the Spirit, Spirit is, is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation, loving us to the end. He gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night, he gave himself up for us all. He took the bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on the high, and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Wherever we are gathered this evening, we pray together and welcome the Lord Jesus into our hearts. Lord, you stand at the door of my heart and knock. You wait for me and only I can let you in. I believe and trust in you and ask you now to fill me with your presence. Feed me with your body and unite me in your blood that I may be your blessing to a world in need. Amen. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. pray together. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, how is it that you were not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten Those who seek God shall never go wanting Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten Those who seek God shall never 
the wanting, nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten, God alone fills us. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten, those who seek God shall never go wanting, nothing Nothing can frighten God alone fills us. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten God alone. darkest night you kindle the fire that never dies away never dies away within our darkest night you kindle the fire that never dies away never dies away within our darkest night you kindle the fire that never dies away, never dies away. Within our darkest night, you kindle the fire that never dies away, never dies away. Within our darkest night, you kindle the fire. Oh